Special prayer for Sister Darlene's family. Her uh, aunt uh, went to be with the Lord. And let's pray especially for her cousin today that God will be with her and help her. She's having a real hard time with the passing of her mom. And Sister Darlene's with her today. And that's that we have special prayer for that family and uh, the pastor over at uh, uh, Mount Olive Baptist Church will be having the funeral. And you pray for Brother Kirby there that God will help him and be with him and, and use him for his, uh, his honor and glory there in the service. Amen. And then uh, let's just pray that God will just intervene and work in our midst here today. And if there be one here today that doesn't know Christ, that this will be the hour that they'll come to trust him. That's what it's all about. Amen. Seeing people come to the Lord Jesus. Brother Norris Bishop, you lead us to the throne of grace. Yes, Father. Amen. Praise God. You pray for the choir this morning. Amen. Let the songs prepare your heart for the preaching of the word. Amen. Praise God. Y'all cut loose and let it rip this morning. Amen. Amen. Don't nobody hold you back playing around up here this morning. <laughs> Praise God. We on business for the king today. Amen. 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 Say me, choir. Amen. Oh, y'all do better than that. Say me, choir. Amen. I'm in this crowd up here today. I'll do it. Show the choir.
remember the day. Now, you remember the day you got yes. You think about it real good. Amen. Long as they can live at home. Praise God. Don't try to do this and do that today. Or if you remember that far, you remember the Lord. Remember the conditions of all the things of life. You remember the things of life. You remember the things of life. Amen. Yeah. 
repeat. Amen. Brother Kevin, you lead us to the throne of grace and ask God's blessing to be on the offering today. Yes, Father. The ability to work, the ability to do the things that you've given us to do, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity that we can give back a portion. Lord, thank you, Lord Jesus. You'd be upon this offering, Lord Jesus, and let it go to meet the needs of our church. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. My soul cried out for help, he was there. When my heart was broken beyond repair, when my world came crashing in and my life was filled with sin. He was there for me every step of the way. Because of the blood, I found peace in the storm. When I see the cross, I find strength when I'm love has touched my heart like no one else can and my soul has been set free by the blood of the Lamb Amen. 
these eyes that once were blind, they now can see the chains have been broken I've been set free it's because Jesus died and his blood has been applied I can live my life and never be afraid Because of the blood, I found peace in the storm. When I see the cross, I find strength when I'm warm. His love has touched my heart like no one else can. My soul has been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Because of the blood, I found peace in the storm. When I see the cross, I find strength when I'm warm. His love has touched my heart like no one else can. And my soul has been set free by the blood of the Lamb. My soul has been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Let's stand, take our hymn books, turn to 34. 34. <laughs> Feasting on the riches of His grace, resting neath the sheltering wing, always looking on His smiling face, that is why I shout and sing, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Keeps me singing as I go on the last. Soon he's coming back. Starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know. Bill. 
fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Hello. <laughs> I forget about that little switch. I don't know why they have to make these things so complicated, do you? But they do. Praise the Lord. And they don't make these things for fat people either. You, know, you have a hard time getting down on your belt. You know? They want to figure something out, amen. Praise God, but it is good to be in the house of God this morning. Good to see each and every one that's gathered out to worship Him. And I want to preach a little while this morning on three great promises found in the Word of God. And you can be turning with me in your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter number 6, if you will please. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. Now I hope everybody's planning on staying today. We've got a lot of food and a lot of fun and a lot of fellowship. Amen. Praise God, a lot of food, fun, and fellowship. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. Amen? And uh, praise God, I can't wait to get Brother Lee down there in that boxing rink. I didn't know it. Hey, that's a, that's a boxing rink down there. Amen? Praise God, I didn't know that. And can't wait. i tell you what, kids, I can't wait to ride that train. Praise God, I remember when I was a little kid, I used to love to go to Cleveland Park. And ride the train. How many went to Cleveland Park when they was little and rode the train? Praise God. And you know, that thing was shut down for years and then they started running it again. So I've seen these little kids with their hands up. They've been over there riding. But you know, praise God, I tell you what, the greatest time in all the world is with God's people in the house of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. It's when you come to know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. Praise God. There's nothing like it. If, if you're not saved, you don't, know, you don't know what I'm talking about. That's right, praise God. That's like that chocolate cake back there. You know what, that chocolate cake? We got, oh, oh man, I got a little sample of that yesterday. And I can try to tell you how good it is. But they ain't but one way you're going to know how good it is. And that's when you take a bite. The Bible says, oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. You think those old drugs are good. And that old alcohol. And all living in sin and partying it up. And you know what? The Bible says there's pleasure in sin. But it's only for a season. But the joys of the Lord are forevermore. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. If you got your Bible, open to 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. Let's begin our reading in verse number 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And chapter 7 and verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, and spirit perfect in holiness in the fear of God. Let's go to the throne of grace and ask God's blessing 
to be on the Word of God. Brother Pete Matthew, you pray for us today. Amen. You know, I thank God for the great, precious promises of God. I'm glad. Someone said the Bible is full of something like, I don't know how many thousands of promises that are in the Word of God. And someone said all of them's for me. Well, that's not true. There's a lot of promises in the Bible, but you better thank God all of them are not for you. God made promises to Israel that's not even uh, pertaining to us. Right? God made promises to the devil. The devil's promised he's going to be bound in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. He's promised that he's going to be separated from God and God's people in the lake of fire for all eternity. God's made promises to the Christ rejecter. God's promised hell, eternal damnation, but God's promised eternal life to whosoever will let him come. Praise God. In our scripture this morning, there's three precious promises I want us to look at today. And uh, listen, I, I, just, I, I, I just got something real simple today. I want you just to listen and open your heart today. Praise God and, and focus on what I'm saying today. This may be the only opportunity you ever have to be saved. And praise God, that's what this special day is all about. It's for you that are here without God. That you might come to know our Lord Jesus Christ. There's nothing make us happier today. Amen. Praise God. I, I want everybody to have fun, have a good time, have a wonderful time today. But praise God, the only way you're going to really be happy is come to know the Lord. Amen. Trust Him. Amen. But I want to look here. In verse number 17, he said, I will receive you. Praise God. Now, there was some conditions for this. He said, if you come out from among them, come out from this old dirty world, uh, renounce this old world and say, I, hey, I don't want to live that way no more. You know what you call that? You call that repentance. Yes. Praise God. And Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Right. The Bible says that you have to repent to get saved. Yes. Now, that, that's a, a prerequisite for getting saved. You don't get saved without repentance. Nobody gets saved. I don't care how much you come to the altar. I don't care how many tears you weep. You may be sorry because of what sin's done to your life and not be sorry for sin. You may be sorry because things are not going well in your life. You may be having problems with your kids. You may be having marital problems. You may be having all kinds of troubles. But let me tell you something. That's not repentance. I have, well, I'm having these financial, I've got financial reversement in my life, and it seems like the whole world's caving in financially. And uh, if I just come and make a bargain with God, maybe things will get better. No, it don't work that way. Amen? Right. No, the Word of God says except you repent. Repent of sin. You see, sin is rebellion against God. God hates sin. He hates it. He hates all sin. Someone said all sin is the same. Well, that's not true. God does hate all sin. But there's some sins that will bring the judgment and the wrath of God faster than others. God hates all sin. One little sin is enough to put you in the lake of fire frying for eternity. But God hates sin, all sin. And there are some sins that bring the judgment and the wrath of God faster than others. But the Bible makes it absolutely clear. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single one of us here today, there's not a one of us without sin. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise God. What a wonderful gift. Hallelujah. But in our scripture, he said there in verse 17, he said, I will receive you. What a promise. He says, you'll just repent. you just turn from this old world and come to him. He said, he'll receive you. He's waiting with open arms to receive you if you'll come today. You say, but you don't know where I've been, preacher. You don't know what I've done. It don't make any difference. Right. Praise God. I don't care how wicked you've lived. Yeah. I don't care how ungodly you've been. I don't care what sins you may have got entangled in. The blood of Jesus Christ, yeah. God's son, washes right. away all sin. Yeah. Praise God. He'll forgive your sin. I don't care what you've done. Praise God. You, uh, I, th I read in the Bible about some. I read about that old maniac that had a legion of demons in him, but, but Jesus loved him. Praise God. And he came running and fell down at Jesus. The Lord Jesus was there to receive him. I think about Mary Magdalene. She had seven demons in her. I mean, I'm talking about demon-possessed people. Praise God. They came to God, but the demons couldn't hang around. Amen. 
Praise God. Jesus received them. Praise God. He was there. Praise God. When they came and they acknowledged they were sinners and they came to him, old, old Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Some of the worst kind of all. <laughs> Amen. Old Zacchaeus, uh, he ran and he climbed up the top of the sycamore tree, remember? He was a little fellow. He couldn't see Jesus and the crowd was there and, and the word of God says that he ran ahead of the crowd, climbed up the top of the sycamore tree and then Jesus came and stood at the foot of the tree. What was he doing there? He was waiting to receive old Zacchaeus when he had come down that tree. Praise God, maybe you've been up some trees. Maybe the devil's had you up a tree, but Jesus is at the foot of the tree and he's waiting to receive you today, amen? Just like he did Zacchaeus. Praise God, he said he would receive you. You say, but preacher, I've been so bad. It don't matter. Praise God, he saves old murderers like Paul, amen? Praise God. You say, but you don't realize how, how I've lived, how many men I've been with, how many, how many women, how, how, how I've lived in a, such a wicked lifestyle preacher. Let me tell you something. He saved those like the woman at the well, praise God. Hallelujah. She came up that day, praise God, and there was Jesus sitting on the well. What was he doing sitting on the well? You say, he was thirsty, preacher. Oh, let me tell you something. Praise God, he was there for a purpose. He was there to give that woman a drink of that living water there. He was there to receive her, praise God, and save her, just like he's here today to receive you if you'll come. If you'll just trust him, repent of your sins and come, praise God. He made a promise here in the word of God. He said, I will receive you. Red, yellow, black, and white, they're all precious in his sight. It don't matter what color you are. It don't matter what side of the tracks you come from. Now, you know, I can't say that for all churches. There's some churches that wouldn't receive you. But we love you today, and the Lord Jesus loves you today. There's some churches that wouldn't have nothing to do with me. There's a lot of them that don't like me anyway. And there's a lot of them that wouldn't like you, and they wouldn't want you to be a part of their fellowship. They think that you and me are not good enough for them. Praise God. But let me tell you something. I'm royalty, praise God. I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Hey, there's some lodges that wouldn't let you in. But I don't want in anyway. There's some clubs and uh, organizations that don't want you to be a part of it. Uh, and you'll find that all, all over the place. I, I mean, within religious circles and without. But I'll tell you one, praise God, that'll receive you. Praise God, and that's the Lord Jesus, praise God. And he says to come, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. He said, but the, you know the problem? The problem is that you won't come. You won't come. The saddest words in the Bible are in John chapter 5 and verse 40, where Jesus said, but ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Oh, he said he would receive you if you would come. But there's a problem. See, a lot of people are so entangled. We're living in a day when people have got so much to preoccupy their mind. We're living in a time when people, man, they're, they're so full of all the junk that's on TV. They got all the video games. They're, they're just so engulfed in their job. They're so in, they got so much uh, uh, secular pleasure out there to, to keep them busy. They don't have time for God. There used to be a time when people could slow down and actually think for themselves and have time for the sweet Holy Ghost to work in their heart and life. There was a time when people could sit on the neighbor's front porch and hear the old timers talk about when they got saved and they come to God and old time camp meetings. But those days are far gone from us, friend. And our, our little children and our young people are not exposed to the things like they used to be. I'm telling you, praise God, we need to get back to some of the old paths so people can come to Christ so he can receive them. Amen? Praise God. He said, I will receive you if you'll come, praise God. But you have to come. You have to come. That's the only way you'll ever, you'll ever be saved. You say, well, preacher, I, I'm, uh, I'm poor. It don't make any difference, rich or poor. I, I, I see some people that are so poor, they're proud of it. <laughs> Ain't that something? And there's some that's so rich and they think they're so self-sufficient, they don't need God. Let me tell you something. Praise God. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what color you are, what you're standing. Praise God. Jesus Christ receives one kind, and that's sinful men. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief, Paul said. What kind of sinner was he? He was a religious murderer. He was a very religious man, but yet he was guilty of murder. He had the blood, blood of the saints of God dripping from his fingers. 
spiritually, amen? He stood there and held the coats of those that stoned, uh, stoned Stephen to death there that day. Oh, but he couldn't get away from the pricking of the Holy Ghost. As he was on his way down the road to Damascus, the Spirit of God was pricking his heart, and he couldn't get away, and God struck him down on the road to Damascus. Why? That he might receive the chief of sinners. That he might get saved. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And God's here to receive you today if you'll come. Praise God. And, and there's another promise. Oh, I love this. Listen to this. God wants it to be real personal. Is, let me ask you something. Is your salvation real personal today? I just want to show you how personal it is to God, okay? In verse number 18, look what he said. And I will and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Amen. Praise God. He says, I'll receive you, praise God, and you'll become my child. There's two ways that we become a child of God. Did you know that? Two ways. When we come and we trust the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says that we're born into the family of God. The Bible says being born again, over 1 Peter 1 and verse 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. We hear the word of God. See, this word of God's alive. Praise God, this is the seed that God uses. Praise God, in birth in a child. It's the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Praise God, that pure, unadulterated word of God. Amen. Thank God we have the word of God. It just doesn't contain it, praise God, but it is the word of God. Thank God for the Bible, this old King James Bible, God's holy word. Amen. Thank God. Praise God. We're born into the family of God. You say, I don't understand it, preacher. How, did, how does it take place? Jesus said in John chapter 3, he told Nicodemus, a very religious Pharisee, he said, he said, Nicodemus, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He said in verse 7, he said, you must be born again. He wasn't talking about a physical birth. He was talking about a spiritual birth. Amen. We're born into the family of God. Amen. Praise God. And now, hallelujah, we've become his sons. Praise The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God or children of God. Amen. When we receive Christ, we become his children. Hallelujah. Thank God. He's my father. The Bible says in the book of John, praise God, Hallelujah. Now we cry, Abba, Father. Why? Praise God. We call him our Papa. Praise God. It's very close and very personal between those that are saved and the Heavenly Father. Amen. Praise God. By the birth. You say, I don't understand it, preacher. How does it take place? Oh, the Bible says in the book of Titus chapter 3 and verse 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible calls it the operation of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I don't understand it. There's no way that I can explain that in detail. I'll just tell you what God said. Yes. Praise God, we become his child, amen. Yes. Praise God, a spiritual birth takes place. On, on April the 22nd, 1956, I was born into the Cannon family. I became, I became my, my, I was my father's child, amen, by birth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And nothing in the world could change that. You know, I could deny him. I could deny my mama. I could deny my family. But the fact is, I'm a canon. And I was born into the canon family. And if you're saved by the grace of God, you're a Christian. You're washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. And God's not going to undo what he's done. Thank God. Hallelujah. We've been born again. Hallelujah. He said that he had birth as many as would come into his family. We're a child of God by the new birth today. Hallelujah. Born again. Hallelujah. Thank God. By birth. Praise God. But you say, but what about the legal technicalities of it? Well, hallelujah. I'm glad you asked. Because we're a child today by adoption also. He birthed us and he also adopted us. You say, I don't understand that. How can it be both ways? I, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I've, I've had people tell me, and whether this is really true or not, I don't know, but I kind of believe it is. They say when you adopt, you adopt a child and you sign those papers 
that there's no way that you can legally disinherit that child. You, that child that's just by birth, you can, you can disinherit them. And say, I'm not giving them anything anymore. The, what's mine's mine, what's theirs is theirs. But that's not way with a child that's adopted. You cannot disinherit an adopted child. Praise God. And the Bible says that God has adopted us. Amen. We've been adopted into the family. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 5. Listen to this. The Bible says, having predestinated. I'm, that means he planned it before this mud ball was ever had the spin put on. Praise God. Having predestinated us uh, to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Praise God. It was his good pleasure and will, praise God, to adopt me into the family of God. And I don't understand it, but I sure do like it. Amen. I don't deserve it, but I sure do like it. Praise God. And I'll spend the endless ages and eternity praising him and thanking him for his goodness and his blessings. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I just want to say I'm glad to be a child of God. I'm so glad that I'm a part of the family of God today. Amen. By birth right. and by adoption, Brother Sean. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In the book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 5, listen to this. To redeem, redeem, I'll get it out, hold on. I just got hit a stump there. To redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Praise God, we've been adopted into the family of God. There's another verse that deals with that, Romans chapter 8. And verse number 15, listen to this. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Praise God. How do you know, praise God, how do you know, preacher, that it's been taken care of? How do you know that you're really a child of God? Well, first of all, I've got it in writing. Amen. 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 I, I, it's all taken care of. All, all legal technicalities have to be taken care of, praise God, in writing. Amen. If you don't have it in writing, it ain't worth nothing. Praise God. You might as well get that down. You better remember that, young people. You better make sure you get it in writing. Amen. Because if it ain't in writing, it ain't no good. And God give it to us in writing. Say, so, hey, you know that you say, praise God, because God's not going to go against his word, praise God. He signed his name to it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I've got it in writing, and then I've got it in my heart. Yeah. The spirit itself also bears witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. Hallelujah. The sweet Holy Ghost bears witness. Praise God. I'm a child of the King. Hallelujah. He lives. He lives. You say, how do you know he lives? Because he lives within my heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Three great promises. Praise God. He said, I will receive you. I'll be a father to you. Ain't that wonderful, Brother Kevin? Yes. Hallelujah. And he said, I, I will dwell in them in verse number 16. Oh, praise God. Look at verse number 16 of our text there. He said in about middle ways of that verse. The Bible says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Yes. He said that he was going to live and abide. Yes. Now he doesn't come and go. Yes. When he came into our heart and life, he came there to stay, the Bible said. He said over in the book of Hebrews 13 and verse 5, he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yeah. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, the word of God tells us there in verse number 13, or, or yes, verse number 13, it says that after we believed, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. God's put a seal upon us. 
We've been birthed into the family, adopted. Praise God. We're the sons of God by adoption. And God said, I put my seal of the Holy Ghost on it so nothing can't corrupt it. Nothing can't change it. Praise God. Nothing can't undo it. Hallelujah. And he said, I'm going to seal it with a sweet Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit moved into our heart and life when we got saved. It wasn't, it wasn't something that come later that we had to pray for. We had to get down and pray for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and all that stuff. That's not in the Bible, amen. The Bible says by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. After that we get saved. When we get saved, praise God, the Spirit of God takes his abode in our life. We're birthed into the family of God. And he lives in our heart and our life, the Holy Ghost. Now we say Jesus lives in my heart. He does through the Holy Spirit. We know actually Jesus in his physical body, he's seated upon the throne right there beside the majesty on high. Praise God, he sat down on the right hand of the Father. Amen? Hallelujah. That's where Jesus is, but praise God, he's omnipresent. He's an omnipresent God. And he, and he dwells in the hearts and the lives of men through the sweet Holy Spirit. Praise God. I'm trying to tell you, we have connections. Amen. Praise God, the Holy Spirit is what connects us with the throne of grace. Yes. Praise God, without His Spirit, we can do nothing. Oh, what great, exceeding great and, and precious promises of God. Amen. Thank God for the sweet Holy Spirit. He said, I'll dwell in you. I'm going to live inside. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and verse 16, Know ye not that you're the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? And the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed. We're sealed till the day of redemption. Praise God, he's living inside of us that are saved. Amen. You say, I don't, I don't feel him living inside of me. Well, maybe you're not saved. Amen. How do I know he's there? Praise God, because how do you get saved? You're never the same. Never. You'll never be the same. I don't care where you wonder. I don't care what you do. You're going to be of all men most miserable if you let sin get in your life and you're a saved man. A saved man uh, if he, he cannot be happy and live in sin. Right, if you can just be happy, go lucky and do anything, live any old way, do people any way, talk about people, lie and cheat and steal, live ungodly in a profane life, then you don't know Christ. That's right. You might do some of those things, but I'll tell you one thing, he's going to chastise you. Amen. He's going to wear you out. He's going to set your britches on fire spiritually. Right. Amen. Amen. He's going to tear you up if you're really a child of God and you walk contrary to his will. Just like our, we, the Bible says that if you're without chastisement, your bastards are not sons. You're illegitimate, never been saved by the grace of God. Oh, but he promised, he promised. Listen, if you're here today and you're not saved, he said, he says, if you'll come, he'll receive you. He said, I'll be a father to you. And he said, he's going to dwell in those that he saves. He lives and abides within. Praise God. You say, oh, it don't sound too good to me. It sounds really good to me. Amen. You say, that's not too appealing to me, preacher. Then that's because you don't know him. That's because you don't know what I'm talking about. You, you don't know what it is to experience the love of Christ. You don't know what it is this morning to enjoy the sweet fellowship and communion of the Holy Ghost. You, just, you, just, you never have experienced it. And that's the reason it doesn't appeal to you. You've got a lot of other things in your heart and in your mind that are appealing to you, that are drawing your affections and your attentions away from the most precious thing that you could ever have, and that's salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're here today and you're not saved, God wants to save you today. Listen to me and listen good. There's a burning hell down under our feet. If, if God, we could walk outside and instead of fun today, God would just let the... Let the earth split open and we could look down into the heart of this earth and you could see what was going on down in hell tonight while you would scream your way to this altar. But unless you'll believe the word of God, unless you believe the Bible, you'll not be saved. Oh, God loves you today. He cares for you so much. And he'll save you today if you'll come. If you'll just come and trust him and believe today, he'll give you everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves you so much today. He really cares for you. He wants you to be saved. You're not here by accident today. You're here because the Lord wanted you to be here. He loves you today. He wants to save you. Let's stand. Sister Susan, come play for us.
You let God have His sweet will and way in your life today. Maybe the Holy Spirit spoke to you today and you say, Preacher, I sure am sick and tired of the way I've been living. I've tried everything this old world's got to offer. I ask you, why don't you give Jesus a chance in your life? You've tried everything else. Give the Lord a chance today. He said you have to come. He will not bend your arm. He will not force you. He wants you to come because you choose to. He said, I'll receive you. He says, I'll make you my child. And I'll live and abide within you. This is the house of God. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You slip out and come on. Let the Lord. Let the Lord do what He wants to do in your life. How many can hold that hand up and say, Preacher, I've received the Lord Jesus. I've come to Him. And I know I'm a child of God. Hold your hand real high. You say, I know I'm saved. There's no doubt about it. I remember the day, just like the choir sung the song. I remember that the, the day that the Lord saved me. Can you really remember that day when Jesus came into your heart? Why don't you come on and give your heart to Him today? Do you hear, you, you don't remember the day. Maybe you remember the day you joined the church. Maybe you remember the day that you got baptized. But for as a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you say, no preacher, I don't remember. Really true commitment in my heart to Him. Why don't you come and take care of that today? Let God work in your heart today.